lot of things can change in your life from A to Z. They don't understand it has to do with minerals. It's all about minerals. When it comes to plants and agriculture and the whole matrix of minerals, and even the salt in the ocean, there's one stone that ties it all together. Mica, the stone, matches the human RNA. It supplies the salt in the ocean. It also supplies those sulfate silicate springs you've heard of that are world healing. But on a more higher level, when you come to humans, people don't even know we're using this for almost everything we do. When you actually add our minerals to the water that, that are extracted from uh, the mica stone, the high iron content, which actually is in all of our cells, when you have ferric iron and uh, sulfur in your cells, you have a healthy cell. When people have the inability to produce cells, they don't have, they're, they're lacking iron. The ferric iron is the key. When you add this mineral solution to the water, now everybody gets tap water, whether you wash your dishes or turn on the shower, it looks clear. You see clear water coming out. You put it in a glass, it looks clear. You can see through it. But there's actually a lot of things in there you can't see. And what happens is the, the, those contaminants are dissolved in the water as part of the cluster. Uh, there's many molecules in one cluster, and a typical, like say, tap cluster will be anywhere from 12 to 14 molecules in one cluster. And on, that, uh, on those molecules, all kinds of stuff attached. Um, from sodium fluoride to uh, THM. Let's say you have a strand like this, and it's 12 molecules. Each, each curve is a, is a molecule going down. Now, imagine that strand trying to get into your cells. You know, it's just blocking, right? It's also attached with all kinds of crud and dissolved who knows what. The minerals, actually, it's almost like a zip string. It pulls all that stuff off. You can see it occur, right? And then all the molecules go back to their original state. So now they're like this. You're seeing the water clean itself, so it's not like you're not seeing that happen. The original uh, technology was discovered slash uh, proce uh, the processes in Japan. Uh, his name is Shimanishi. He's a sensei on water. He's not like, like Dr. Emoto. Everybody's here probably heard of Dr. Emoto. I have an article where Emoto interviewed sen uh, Shimanishi, and when he starts the interview, he says, Shimanishi Sensei. So even Emoto refers to him as Sensei. Uh, a woman named Helen Hansma, she's uh, from Sa Santa, uh, Santa Barbara, California. She's funded by the NSF. She's been researching this for 20 years. Helen Hansma showed what this stone contained. Basically, in a bio, like a, from a biochemist's point of view, under a microscope, what, how does it identify with life? The first thing she found is that the sheets, now, anybody ever see mica? It's like a glossy top, like almost like thin sheets of cellophane compressed. The structure is called lamella. Well, anybody know what lamella is? Mother of pearl. Our bones are also the structure of lamella. And anybody know what our bones are designed to do? Produce cells and house minerals. What type of cells? Red and white, right? That's why you got yellow and red blood marrow. Mica does the same thing. It's the only substance on the planet that can produce single-celled organisms without membranes, known as algae. It's where it comes from, the mica. And it also houses minerals. How interesting. It matches our bones. So then you get to the sheets themselves, and they're spaced exactly the same distance as our spells are, cells are spaced. And they're also held, by, held together by potassium ions, which is also what our cells are held together by, potassium ions. Anybody ever hear of potash? Potash, right? Why is potash uh, the most prevalent uh, mineral in soil, and why is it so? Everybody's like, oh, well, that's why it's alkaline, because there's potash there. First of all, potassium is the most dissolvable mineral. It dissolves really fast. So whenever they would do their crops and burn them or whatever, whatever was left was mostly potassium. So when they feed the soils back, so they'd have to add some sort of acids unless the soil was already balanced to get those soils to reactivate and grow again. That comes from mica, the potassium. That's the first thing that's released when nature's releasing this stuff into the oceans, into the springs. It also has the same calcium, magnesium, and sodium levels as the ocean and our blood. That's why our blood matches the ocean. We match the ocean when it comes to our blood. So 
I'm trying to get people to understand these things so they can see the simple truths in nature and say, oh, well, this is what I need because this is what nature's showing me I need, not some doctor who has a degree who only had two college credit hours on minerals and water. They don't even study it. They have no clue what's going on with minerals and water. In fact, most people aren't even recommended to drink water when they go to the doctor. Our, bloods are neg our blood cells are negatively charged. Uh, all the minerals in mica are known as oxides, which means they contain negative charges. They use currently in the world today, it's, one of the, it's the most used mineral on the planet, and it has been. We don't even know how long it hasn't been the most used mineral on the planet. What, what happens if there's too many, uh, like say, iron or calcium scale in the water? Uh, a good one is calcium scale because then I can actually give you a number. Uh, most waters, tap waters, and your standard uh, spring waters will have like a 500 parts per million on the calcium scale. This will reduce it by 95% almost instantly. So what's happening actually, just like with the sodium fluoride, the minerals that are within this matrix are actually absorbing whatever's out there and putting them in the matrix, just like fulvic acid does. In fact, fulvic acid is the stuff you're seeing, uh, where's the sample? The stuff you see sink out over time. What's sinking out, of, where's fulvic acid? Anybody know where fulvic acid is? Well, I'm gonna, where, where, where you would find fulvic acid in nature? Where, where's the most prevalent place? It, if you did a research and said fulvic acid, where is it? Every stream, every river, every lake, every natural body weight, even the ocean has fulvic acid at the bottom. You ever step in a pond and it's like that mushy, ushy stuff at the bottom? Fulvic acid. So when the, when the sulfate springs are, what, everybody here, the spring goes to the stream, the stream goes to the river, and the river goes to the lake, and the lake goes to the ocean. Right? Well, some of that's changed. Not all, it's not true these days, but it used to be true. Every spring leads to the ocean, or every river leads to the ocean. So if you could imagine these aquifers spitting out all these sulfate minerals, and then what do you have in water? Uh, fish poop, uh, dead animals. Uh, how does the water stay fresh? So these sulfates are now going in precipitating the organic rotten waste, reducing the oxygen demand so that the fish can breathe, because now you have fish dying everywhere. Oh, oxygen demand's too high. And then, and then that stuff that sinks out to the bottom, what does it become? Your fulvic acid. What is fulvic acid mainly composed of? The main element for fulvic acid, anybody know? Iron, ferric iron, ferric iron. What does that ferric iron do in the fulvic acid? converts bad iron into good iron, converts bad elements into good elements. So that's what's happening. That's what you see happening. The iron from the mica, the ferric iron, the sulfate, is mixing and like a magnet. It's, a, it's grabbing and robbing. It's robbing electrons. It's robbing all kinds of stuff. And then it precipitates, becomes heavy. Now you have accumulation of years and years and years. Now you have people going in and saying, Oh, look at this ancient bed. We better mine this and extract it because we're low in minerals. That's how desperate we're getting. We're going to the dead carcasses at the bottom and saying, let's go here. You know, you heard that story. Oh, they're eating dirt because they need minerals. That's what we're doing right now. We're eating dirt because we need minerals. You don't have to eat dirt. You just have to know what form and where those minerals are supposed to come from. As long as you do that, you'll always be safe.